Today we're talking about carbon steel pans in general and maiden carbon steel pan in particular. I've owned it for about a year and I think it's about time that we compared it to my trusty old Metfer pan. We'll even stress test the seasoning of both of these pans with some lemon juice. This is a very dangerous thing to do to your carbon steel pans. Kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> Which pan will be left standing? Stay with me to find out. Okay, so what exactly is carbon steel? Carbon steel is 99% iron and 1% carbon. For comparison, cast iron is 97 to 98% iron and 2 to 3% carbon. Yes, it's completely counterintuitive that carbon steel contains less carbon than cast iron, even though it has the word carbon in its name. From the functional perspective, these materials are almost the same and they share the same strengths and weaknesses. The strength of this material is that it can be seasoned to become almost non-stick. Not quite Teflon, but close. The weakness is that it heats less evenly than aluminum. Aluminum is the most common material for pans in American households. Since aluminum is a reactive metal, these pans are usually lined with some non-reactive coating like stainless steel or Teflon. Another counterintuitive thing is that these pans go by the name of the coating. People refer to them as stainless steel pans or Teflon pans, but at their core, they are really aluminum pans. Aluminum is a great conductor. It heats up quickly, cools off quickly, and moves the heat from the heat source to the other parts of the pan quickly. That's why aluminum pans cook very evenly. Iron is not nearly as good of a conductor as aluminum. That's why it's prone to hot spots. To deal with this problem of uneven heating, most cast iron and carbon steel pans are very thick and heavy. This helps them cook more evenly, but also makes them very slow to adjustments in heat. Okay, so if carbon steel and cast iron are basically the same material, why do we treat them as two different categories of cookware? That's because they differ in their shape, the handle, and the smoothness. Cast iron pans usually have fairly straight sides, and carbon steel pans have sloped sides. With cast iron, the handle and the pan are made of the same piece of metal. Cast iron handles are generally short and get very hot. Carbon steel pans have a separate handle that is welded to the pan or attached with rivets. It can be made from a different material, which allows it to be longer and stay cooler. Ideally, it could also allow the pan to be lighter. Unfortunately, most carbon steel pans don't have handles that are light or cool or comfortable, but at least they are longer than cast iron, which makes it easier to maneuver the pan and to put a protective sleeve on the handle. The last important difference between cast iron and carbon steel is the smoothness of the bottom of the pan. If you were lucky enough to inherit an antique cast iron pan, its bottom might be completely smooth, but most modern cast iron pans like Lodge are bumpy. I tried to buy a very expensive cast iron pan made by Field, and it's not much better. Instead of little bumps, the bottom is covered with very thin lines, like a vinyl record. It might be impossible for my camera to show you that, but it's not smooth. I find that this bumpiness makes it hard to achieve a truly non-stick surface and slows down the seasoning process. If you are handy with power tools, you can smooth it out with an electric sander. There are many YouTube videos on how to do that, but that's not something I am comfortable doing. Luckily, carbon steel pans come completely smooth, which helps them take on the seasoning rather easily. You see this little pan? This is my first ever carbon steel pan from Matfor that I've had for about five years. I love this pan. With time, it became really nonstick and it makes a fabulous omelet. The reason I don't use it for much else is because it's so small and heavy. 
If I upgrade to a bigger metro pen, it will be tremendously heavier. I also find not using any acidity really annoying. Say I roasted some veggies. I'd need to get them out of the pan before giving them a squirt of lemon juice or a drizzle of pomegranate molasses. And that's just not the same thing. I want that lemon juice to sizzle and reduce slightly. If I get them out of the pan first, the lemon juice makes them feel soggy. I would gladly give up on cast iron and carbon steel altogether. But there are a few dishes that do come out exceptionally well in them. Roasted root veggies, particularly thinly sliced potatoes, are simply heavenly. Since the field cast iron pan didn't live up to my great expectations, I thought I would try a 12-inch made-in carbon steel pan. Here's what attracted me to it. It has a stainless steel handle, which is supposed to stay cool and reduce the weight of the pan. For a 12-inch carbon steel pan, it's pretty light. Sure, it's not as light as a 12-inch stainless steel pan, but for its category, it is one of the lightest pans out there. In their promotional materials, Maiden claimed that this pen is very responsive. In other words, it heats up and cools off very quickly. This sounded great, but made me a little nervous. In order to heat up and cool off quickly, the pen would need to be rather thin, which meant that it would be prone to hot spots. But I thought maybe Maiden had some new revolutionary technology that made it both responsive and even. This company had so many celebrity chefs endorsing their cookware that I thought it was worth a shot. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> even after a year of use, this pen is not working for me. Here are some smashed burgers. See how unevenly they are browning? Yes, I tried to heat up the pan longer to get it to even out, but even without the oil, some parts of the pan got hot so quickly that they started to smoke. This uneven browning is easy to explain. The pan is just too thin. But what I can't easily explain is how sticky this pan is and how badly it holds seasoning. Here are some steaks that I cooked in it after about two months of use. To be fair, the pan was only two months old, but it has been through several rounds of seasoning and regular cooking, and yet it was still sticking. I don't know how to explain it, but here is my guess. After I wash the pan, I dry it and set it over the burner to dry completely. Then I rub it with a tiny bit of oil and wait for it to harden over moderate heat for 10 to 15 minutes. I have a feeling that some parts of the pan get overheated by the time all the oil polymerizes, in other words, hardens. Reseasoning in the oven might solve this problem, but I can't run the oven for an hour every time I use this pan. The slight reseasoning the stovetop is very typical. Although the pan did get a bit more nonstick with time, the seasoning is still very finicky. To show you how Maiden and Matfer compare in seasoning retention, I'm going to do something slightly crazy. I'm going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon juice into both pans. I just roasted potatoes in both pans, so they are very well greased. We are not going in with lemon juice into completely naked pans here. I can see some of the seasoning on the maiden pan dissolving. Let's wash it and inspect the damage. Well, that's not good. Now, let's try mat fur. Okay, let's wash it and inspect the damage. It seems fine, still black and smooth. To be fair, Matt for pen is older, but I barely use it. While breaking in, the maiden pen has been my project for the past year. After a bit of googling, I found out that my experience with Maiden Carbon Steel Pen is not unique. If you want to see way more testing of this pen, check 
out Uncle Scott's video. Scott shows you many different ingredients, ground beef, sausage patties, bacon, zucchini, okra, and he doesn't just test the span on gas, but also on induction. I wish I watched Scott's video before I shelled out a hundred bucks on the span, but live and learn. <laughs> Another thing I bought from Maiden was this seasoning wax. All the upscale carbon steel and cast iron companies seem to make something like this and I kept wondering if I was missing out by simply using canola oil. Is it worth $25? Absolutely not! It doesn't work any better than oil. Its solid state makes it easy to apply a very thin coating, but you can simply use oil and wipe the oil off very thoroughly before seasoning your pan. You definitely need some form of non-stick cookware for eggs, fish, and potatoes. If you're happy with Teflon, you might not need either cast iron or carbon steel. If you don't like using Teflon, you will need some store of iron cookware. Here's how I would make a decision between cast iron and carbon steel. If you want a pan for burgers, eggs, potatoes, fish, and whatever else you want to brown without sticking, I'd go for carbon steel because of its smooth bottom and a comfortable long handle. If you need a pan for cornbread and biscuits, I'd go for cast iron, since those dishes need straight sides. If you are on a flat top burner like electric and induction, I would check out Uncle Scott's videos for which pans play nicely with those burners. I know that Sirius Eats and Cooks Illustrated like to wax poetic about carbon steel pans and how much professional chefs love them. but. I don't know how much testing they do on flat top burners. So where does this leave me with carbon steel pans? I can totally live without them. But if I have to buy another carbon steel pan, it will likely be matte fur. Matte fur would be heavier and the handle wouldn't stay nearly as cool, but it would probably stick less, brown more evenly, and it's also cheaper. As far as the size goes, go slightly bigger than you think you need because the sides on mat for skillets are very sloped. This means that you get slightly less cooking area than you would in a similar sized pan that's stainless or teflon. The sizes of the pans listed in the description are lip to lip. That's not just for carbon steel, that's for all cookware. This lip to lip measurement doesn't tell you much about the size of the actual cooking surface. For example, this nine and a half inch mat for carbon steel pan has a six and a quarter inch cooking surface, and my eight inch Teflon pan has a six inch cooking surface. That's almost the same size. So when looking at the specs for carbon steel pans, I always choose a size that's about an inch bigger than stainless or Teflon to get the same cooking area. The exact seasoning procedure will depend on which brand of carbon steel you choose and what type of stove you have. So I would strongly suggest that you watch Scott's seasoning videos because he covers that in great detail. I'll link to a few in the description below, but I would check his channel for updates too. Sometimes manufacturers change how their pans are shipped. For example, Madfor used to ship their pans covered in a protective coating and they seem to have changed to a protective bag. Unlike me, Scott stays on top of these things since that's what his channel is all about. And when Madford did that, he put out a video with updated seasoning instructions. I believe that Scott and Cooks Illustrated can answer this question a lot better than I can. Both Scott and Cooks like Matt for a lot, but there are other brands that they can recommend depending on what your priorities are. I'll leave you links in the description below. Cooks Illustrated links are behind a paywall, but Scott's videos are available to everyone. 
The link to my map for pen is in the description below as well. Here are more thought-provoking culinary videos for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.